We go to Pakistan. We have uh, Niha Dagia from Express Tribune. Can you hear us, Niha? Hi, Chris. Um, my question is, there's a looming threat of, of the virus spreading in the slums, but Pakistan's negative to positive ratio is quite high. What do you think the government can do to ensure that it is testing the right people? And do you think that the WHO uh, influenza surveillance can help in detecting community spread? Um, certainly, uh, taking your second question first, there's no question that influenza surveillance systems not only can be used in detecting community spread, uh, but are being used uh, very much uh, all over the world and are proving very effective at picking up signals that the disease is at community level. Maria can speak uh, a little bit more uh, on the numbers around that, but the, the SARI the, or I, ILI surveillance systems that have been developed over the years by the Global Influenza Surveillance and Response System, uh, which has been in place for over 50 years and has protected the world against pandemic influenza, and certainly much progress has been made in retooling that system to keep a, a sentinel watch uh, as the disease spreads in communities. And, and that whole system is now capable of doing systematic uh, testing. Not only is it testing all its samples for influenza, it's also testing those samples uh, for, for, COVID, for SARS CoV 2, or, uh, which is the virus that causes COVID uh, uh, 19. Um, with regard to Pakistan itself, it is, very, um, it is a challenge in a country like Pakistan. I spent two and a half, nearly three years in Pakistan working on, on polio eradication. Uh, I've been in Karachi, I've been in Lahore, I've been in Baluchistan, I've been in Peshawar, uh, and uh, in working uh, in some of the poorest communities uh, on, on polio eradication. And I personally know the challenge that Pakistan faces in, in delivering an effective public health intervention in those circumstances. Uh, the uh, the the structure of the response in Pakistan is quite uh, well laid out with the National Disaster Management Agency. I know that the polio program in Pakistan has been very much retooled to support the response there, but there are limitations. Uh, in the slums in Karachi, it's very difficult for people to social distance. Lockdowns do cause hardship, and, and it's really important that uh, government, NGOs, and others are working to support uh, local communities when they are suffering uh, both the threat of COVID, but also the consequence of restrictions of movement uh, and, 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 and other things. Um, uh, Pakistan continues to, to carry out good surveillance uh, and has had one of the most effective surveillance systems for polio in the world. And not only a surveillance system for the virus, but has been doing uh, extremely good environmental surveillance and other surveillance for, for polio viruses over a large number of years. Uh, the National Institute for Health the, uh, uh, and uh, the the uh, Aga Khan University and, and others are, are, are very competent research uh, 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 outfits and, uh, uh, and there are great lead public health leaders in, in Pakistan uh, like Rana Safdar and many others who can offer the leadership that Pakistan needs on the science, on the science side. And uh, we trust that the government is coming together both at national and provincial level to provide the kind of leadership needed. Thank you. So to add to that, so yes, we, we, we initiated a um, pilot study um, a few months back or a month back, um, which was trying to utilize the existing respiratory disease surveillance systems in countries for COVID-19. So in countries all across the world, um, there are national influenza centers. These are the laboratories that test for flu and for other respiratory pathogens to use that basis to test for COVID-19. So that was building on an existing network. Um, in addition to that, what we started uh, a few weeks ago was about looking at these samples that were collected, that were tested, that were being tested for influenza to check if they had COVID-19. And so now we have this up and running in a number of sites um, where we're looking to see what is the percent positive among those samples for COVID-19 versus influenza. So this is helping us track the trends for influenza in the Northern Hemisphere where the winter season is ending, and also in the summer, Southern Hemisphere where their winter season is just beginning. And that could help us distinguish between COVID-19 patients and influenza patients. Um, in addition, um, 
Pakistan in particular, we're working with our country office uh, who are working with partners there to actually consider conducting a serologic survey as well. So they're going one step beyond that to actually look for the extent of infection from individuals who may be missed by surveillance systems uh, entirely using serologic assays. So there's a number of different ways that you can look for cases there using uh, our recommendations for testing all suspect cases uh, for COVID-19 and contacts who have symptoms, utilizing the ILI or the influenza-like illness surveillance system that exists in many countries, um, and also doing serologic, assay, serologic uh, studies.